are ready. You guys want to pull up a chair? Hold on a second, Cal. Let's just get comfortable. And I did, um, yes, yes, I did have a chance to ask. Okay. Papua New Guinea. There are no written records of the people of Papua New Guinea before the European explorers came in the early part of the 16th century. Archaeological evidence shows there were people long before the Europeans came, about 60,000 years ago. The water level back then was much lower. So there was a land bridge from Australia to Papua New Guinea. The capital of Papua New Guinea is Port Morris Bay. The holidays are the Queen of England's birthday, and they usually don't celebrate other holidays. The people of Papua New Guinea have more than 700 native cultures. That's because the mountains act as a barrier between the different tribes. So there's hundreds of different languages and cultures. Kuru or the laughing sickness. Wait, I skipped a page. There are four largest groups. The four largest groups are the Melanesian, Latmo, Mopa, Motu. Cannibalism was the practice of some tribes in Papua New Guinea, mainly one culture, the Latmo. There was a fatal price for it, Kuru. Kuru, or the laughing sickness, was a disease that came from, arose from cannibalism. The symptoms of Kuru were shaking hands and uncontrollable laughter, and eventually death. The Latmos were headhunters and cannibals. They lived in the middle of Papua New Guinea. They have the most beautiful wood carvings in Papua New Guinea. They do scarification where you scar yourself in patterns on purpose. They tend to make their skin look like crocodiles. The crocodile is the most important animal to them. Scarification is now a few hundred dollars, and not many people do it because it's so expensive. The Melanesians are the group that help Papua New Guinea get its name because of their frizzy hair. Papa means frizzy hair. The Melanesians traditional dress is a lap lap. A lap lap is a cloth that they wrap around or self like a towel. The Mopo lived in the north. They have healers, but they're only men. But if you're a woman, you can be you can come possess and tell the future. They paid themselves deputy for dances. Recently they use liquid paper because the white is extremely white. They have assigned friends that they give presents to for the whole lives. And the more generous you are, the more leadership you have. The Motu are the most affected by the outside world because they live on that south, south coast. They, break, they built great majestic ships from logs and coconut fiber sails that took 30 men to operate. They're very westernized now. A lot of people on Papua New Guinea are Christian because the early missionaries there, but they are hold on to some of their traditional beliefs. Most tribes believe in spirit and spirits and ghosts. They believe that a crocodile split in half and its upper jaw became the heavens and its lower jaw became the earth. There are three main, there are three official languages in Papua New Guinea: English, Papuan, and Motu. English is their official language, but only one two. 2% speak it. The first book ever published in Papua New Guinea was Crocodile by Vincent Earp in 1970. The people of Papua New Guinea use seashells as their currency. Most tribes in Papua New Guinea pay a bride price or gold pay a bride price with pigs and or gold edged seashells and now sometimes they use cash. A bride price is what um, Man pays to his father-in-law before getting married. Even though people get married, men and women live separately. The men live in a house with a cone-shaped roof all together, and the women live in a rectangular house. The children live with their mothers, but the boys go to the men's house when they're eight years old. The majority of people, 85%, 
irrigation substance agriculture substance agriculture agriculture is where you barely make enough food for a living the smaller market section is dominated by foreigners they make things and trade things and food some industries in Papua New Guinea are copper crushing palm oil processing firewood processing wood chip production mining crude oil production construction and tourism even though they export a lot they have some manufacturing they still need help from other countries Australia alone gives them 200 million dollars a year Papua New Guinea's government is a constitutional monarchy. I would like to support their tourism and visit Papua New Guinea someday. <laughs> Do you want to write it on the board, Cal? Sure. And did you notice how he didn't have to look that up? He knew it right off the top of his head. Constitutional. Just sound it out the best you can. Monarchy. If it's scored wrong. Oh. Okay. And will somebody help me pass out to Josh, Noah, Josh? 